Hi, my name is Dr. Joe Childs and I'm a board certified chiropractic neurologist. On this DVD today, I'm going to talk to you about insomnia. I'm also going to talk to you about our insomnia program, our drug-free insomnia program. Now, as a board certified chiropractic neurologist, I treat lots of different conditions, lots of uh, back pain and uh, patients with fibromyalgia and chronic neck pain and headaches and, th and things of that nature. And the one thing that I would say that the majority of these patients have in common is they almost always do not sleep well. Now sleep is absolutely essential to all of your functions in your body. It's when you repair. So if you're a patient with insomnia, let's say you're an insomnia patient and you don't have uh, any other symptoms, it's only a matter of time before you're going to start developing other problems because your body, it's essential that it gets sleep. If you don't sleep, you're going to end up in trouble in the future. And so I've helped a tremendous amount of patients, patients with uh, insomnia and they don't have any other conditions. The, the sole reason why they've come to my office uh, is to have neurological based care for their insomnia. And I've helped a lot of people that have other conditions that also as I talk with them, they have insomnia. They tell me they have insomnia. Once we get them sleeping, they, the other conditions t start to do better also. So we're going to talk to you about how we treat patients with insomnia. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself before we get into talking about insomnia. Again, I'm a board-certified chiropractic neurologist. Now, just like uh, in medicine, you can specialize and you can become a, a medical neurologist or a medical orthopedist. In chiropractic, you can have additional schooling beyond the uh, core chiropractic courses, and you can and you can specialize in neurology. So. Uh, I took a board to become a board certified chiropractic neurologist and the only difference from the way I function as a neurologist and a medical neurologist is medical neurologists give medications. So if you have uh, insomnia, they're going to give you Ambien and Lunesta and all these different things like that. Whereas a chiropractic neurologist, we're going to treat you differently. We're going to treat you uh, with specific types of uh, stimulations and metabolic care. We're going to talk about that. I'm also fellowship trained in functional neurology. I'm fellowship trained in childhood neurodevelopmental disorders. So I see a lot of kids with uh, uh, neurodevelopmental problems like ADD and ADHD. I'm trained in functional nutrition and functional medicine and blood chemistry. I'm also trained in spinal decompression and biomechanics. A lot of people with uh, insomnia also have chronic pain. Uh, I'm also an exercise physiologist and I'm also trained in chiropractic pedi uh, pediatrics. So what is different? and What makes us different than every other doctor you've seen? And I'm sure with your insomnia, you've been to multiple doctors trying to find out why you can't sleep. Um, what makes us different is we treat insomnia metabolically and neurologically. Very important to understand that. Metabolically and neurologically. It's the missing link in the, getting rid of the true cause of somebody's insomnia. Now you can mask your insomnia and you can take medications again you have Ambient, Lunesta, all these different drugs that are out there for insomnia but these drugs are not fixing the core reason why you have the insomnia they're covering the problem and, and also these drugs have uh, side effects I mean uh, Lunesta, Ambient are uh, listed on their side effects depression, dizziness, suicidal thoughts, allergies uh, rebound insomnia. So when, you, when you're on the uh, insomnia medication and you're on it for a long period of time uh, and you eventually decide to go off of it, you're going to have rebound insomnia was, that's worse than the insomnia that, that you had when you first, uh, first went on. Uh, and, and you have withdrawal symptoms, you get nausea, you get vomiting. Uh, they are addictive. Um, so I'm never going to tell a patient, uh, you know, as a chiropractic neurologist, I'm not... Um, license to tell you to go on medications or go off medications. So I'm never going to tell you to go off of your sleeping medications, but as you get healthier through the neurologic and metabolic care that we do in our office, you can go back to your medical doctor and your medical doctor can uh, start to wean you off of these medications. So let's, uh, let's talk uh, a little bit about it. So we're going to get to the root cause, big word, cause. And we're going to leave no stone unturned to discover the reason why you have insomnia. So if you're watching this video right now, either you or a loved one have insomnia and you're looking for answers because, uh, you know, sleep is so important for your body and sleep is, I mean, it's nice to sleep. I mean, people want to sleep. It's, it's vital. Uh, it's vital for your mind. It's vital for your function. It's vital for how you're going to succeed in life. I mean, if you can't sleep, you're not going to be able to focus in life. So let's talk a little bit about it. So insomnia is a neurologic and metabolic problem. Your brain requires two things to function properly. It requires fuel and it requires activation. Fuel is in the form of glucose. It's in the form of the substrates your body needs to function. It's also in the form of oxygen. Activation means your brain needs to be stimulated. And so we do specific 
brain stimulations as a functional neurologist, as a drug-free neurologist, we do specific brain stimulations. We're going to talk about it. So again, we treat you metabolically and neurologically. I said that many times, but I want you to understand that's what makes us different. So what we do is we do complete metabolic care. We're going to run a complete metabolic panel. We're going to run a complete lipid panel. We're going to run a complete CBC, which is a complete blood chemistry with auto differential. We're going to do thyroid panel. We're going to look at your uh, TPO antibodies, which are thyroid antibodies. And now this is what always gets said at this point. Patients always say, well, Dr. Childs, i already been to the doctor and I had all these tests. And all these tests are normal. They're not normal. First off, if they were normal, why do you still feel terrible? There's got to be something metabolically going on, right? So here's the deal. They're not normal. Because what happens is, is medical doctors look at what's considered lab ranges. So most of you have been told they're normal, but it's because the doctors are looking at your lab ranges. What are lab ranges? Lab, when you, well, you know, when you pick up your blood work and you look on the left-hand side is your values, on the right-hand side is the, the values that are considered normal. Well, they're lab ranges. Lab ranges are developed by all the people getting blood work in the whole entire country. Everybody giving blood work. That's what, you're the average of those people. Now, I don't know about you, but if you go over to a Quest or you go over to a little lab corp or the hospital and you see who's giving blood, it's usually pretty unhealthy people. So you're the average of everybody. That's where those lab values come. They're very inaccurate. So we use what's called the optimal range, the functional range. These values are more sensitive and they reveal problems. Let me give you an example. Okay, this is why your lab tests are normal and you still and you still can't sleep. So let's let's go a little further. Let's talk about the uh, some values. Let's just look at glucose, for instance. The functional range for glucose, the healthy optimal range is 85 to 100. Your blood glucose. The traditional lab ranges are 65 to 110. That means you can be at 109 and your doctor is going to say everything's all right. But guess what's right around the corner? 127 is diabetes. So you're only, if you're 109, you're only 18 points away from diabetes. Or you may be, let's say, 71. And that's still within the lab values, but that's way below 85. And that means you have reactive hypoglycemia. You don't have enough blood sugars. Patients with insomnia have abnormal adrenal function, and they have abnormal blood sugar function. It's part of the reason why they can't sleep. But a lot of times they have never been tested for this. When they get tested, the doctor says it's fine because they're looking at these big lab values. Okay? Uh, thyroid is the same thing. A functional range for, for TSH is 1.8 to 3.0, but a traditional lab range is 0.3 to 5.7. That's a lot broader. Okay, so we want to look at that. Um, Metabolic care. Let's talk a little bit more. One thing that we run on our patients, and this test is a must for insomnia patients, is adrenal stress index. We have to look at your adrenals. I can guarantee you if you have insomnia, your adrenals are shot. They are not working well. What are your adrenals? The adrenals are the glands that sit right on top of your kidneys. They are essential for sugar metabolism and they're also essential for your circadian rhythms. Okay, so your adrenal glands secrete cortisol. We can run a salivary test. We run it four times in the day, in the morning, in the midday, in the, in the, uh, towards the end of the night, and we run it right before you go to bed. And we can see what your cortisol levels are as you go through the day. Cortisol levels should be high in the morning, low at night. But patients with adrenal issues, a lot of times, excuse me, uh, insomnia, a lot of times their adrenals are shot, meaning they have almost no cortisol. They're in adrenal fatigue, adrenal burnout from stress, from things like that. We run this test. Again, it's a salivary test. If you're suffering from insomnia or blood sugar issues, the ASI will measure your cortisol levels. When your body's cortisol levels are abnormal, you will suffer from insomnia. So patients that have too high of cortisol, they're never going to get to sleep. Because what happens is they have too much what's called catecholamine hormones. So they just don't get to bed. They can't sleep. Patients that have low cortisol and low blood, blood sugar or adrenal burnout, what will happen is in the middle of the night, because they can't get enough blood sugar, what will happen is their adrenals will, will fire. And what will happen is the, their adrenals will fire what's called epinephrine. And so they pop up in the middle of the night and they're up the rest of the night. They can't sleep. So there's different types of insomnia. Some people never get to sleep at all and some people get a little bit of sleep and then they pop back up. So they only get a couple hours. Okay? Both of those things are horrible for your health. They're going to lead to a chronic condition down the road. Fibromyalgia, almost every patient with fibromyalgia had insomnia before they had fibromyalgia, which is painful achiness all over their body. So the adrenal stress index. So we're going to see it's going to, it's going to come out, it's going to give us like a circadian rhythm profile, and it's going to let us know what your, uh, what your cortisol levels are at different times during the day. Essential for patients 
with insomnia. Sensitivity testing. We're going to run the big five. Patients that have insomnia a lot of times are sensitive to gluten, casein, uh, soy, yeast, or milk, or egg. These are the big five. And what they are is they are proteins that people have sensitivities to, not allergies, sensitivities to. And we run a stool test. The stool test, what the stool test is going to do is let us know if you're sensitive to these things. If you're sensitive to these things, what it's doing is it's causing inflammation in your body and it's causing inflammation in your brain and is affecting the way you sleep at night. Absolutely essential that we run, run these tests. Again, a lot of people say, well, I've already been tested, Dr. Childs, for gluten sensitivity. I had a blood test, and they, they wanted to find out if I had uh, celiac disease. Celiac, the test for celiac disease, the blood test for celiac disease, is not sensitive, sensitive enough to pick up food sensitivities to gluten, casein, soy, and egg. And we're going to get a DNA testing, also a swab on the inside of your mouth, to find out if you have the genetics to be sensitive to this. If you have sensitivity issues, this test is going to determine if you have a sensitivity to gluten, wheat, rye, oats, barley. All these food groups can be making your insomnia worse if you're sensitive to it. One way to tell somebody has uh, sensitivities to these things is they can have some of these issues. They may have chronic pain or fatigue. They may have insomnia, frequent indigestion, fullness after meals, bloating after meals, frequent loose bowel movements, constipation, vomit often, mouth ulcers or they can have absolutely none of that, meaning it could be affecting their brain because sensitivities affect the brain, allergies don't affect the brain. So we have to test for this. Have you been tested for this? Probably have not been. We want to test the intestinal permeability test. We'll, we'll test and see if you have leaky gut syndrome. This goes hands in, hand in hand with the, with the sensitivity problem because patients that have leaky gut, your gut wall, the, the, the wall in your intestines, separates. It's a barrier between the outside world, which is really the inside of where your food comes down through your intestines. That's a barrier between uh, the inside of your intestines and your bloodstream. Okay? You have multiple barriers in your body. You have a blood-brain barrier, you have the lung barrier, your skin is a barrier, and your intestinal wall is a barrier. What the intestinal wall does is it keeps the bad stuff out and only lets the good stuff in. Does that make sense to you? It's kind of like a screen door. A screen door only lets air in but keeps the bugs out. Well, it's essential that you have a good gut integrity. If your, if your gut becomes leaky, what will happen is protein molecules that are not fully digested, like gluten and casein, will get in through the leaky gut. The only thing that should get through the gut, as, as protein comes down, the protein becomes digested, and it gets digested from big proteins, which we'll call them quarters, it get, they get digested down from quarters, they get digested down into, um, let's say, uh, nickels, which are peptides, and then down all the way to the smallest things, which we'll call dimes, which are amino acids. The only thing that should get through are the amino acids, or, or the dimes, through, through, the, uh, through the gut. But when you have a leaky gut, what will happen is proteins and peptides will just go on through into the bloodstream. And what will happen is your immune system is going to think that it should attack these, air, these things. And what it will do, it will think it's an invader, it will think it's a, vac a bacteria or a virus, and it starts creating an autoimmune reaction inside your body. That can affect your brain and affect the way you sleep. So we have to test you for leaky gut. Insomnia can be caused by an autoimmune disorder. An underlining autoimmune disorder, not an autoimmune disorder like uh, lupus or rheumatoid arthritis or things like that, but an underimmune disorder, an autoimmune disorder that's going on that's not quite so bad yet that it's not named yet, but it can still be affecting your body. So we have to test you for autoimmunity. So we do immune panels. If you have an, if you're suffering from an autoimmune disorder, it trumps everything in getting rid of your insomnia. We have to fix it. It trumps the anemias. It trumps the blood sugar issues. So we're going to run uh, immune panels. We're going to run the TMB lymphocytes. We're going to run cytokines, which are inflammatory uh, agents, interleukins. We're going to run natural killer cell activity. There's two parts of your immune system, Th1 and Th2. Th1 is one side, Th2 is the other side. They need to be balanced. Th1 has interleukin, interleukin 2 and, and TNF-alpha, and, and, and Th2 is going to be interleukin-4 and interleukin-10. They need to be balanced. We can test interleukin-4, interleukin-10, TNF-alpha, and interleukin-2. If they're not balanced, you have an autoimmune disease or you have an autoimmune condition. Okay? Th1 is your T-cells. The T-cells go out and they destroy bacteria and viruses and things like that. They're like the, the army. Or Th2 are the B-cells. What the B-cells do is they create antibodies. So they don't go out and do the attacking. They sort of tag what needs to be attacked. Okay, very important that they're balanced. Um, 
We got to find out if you have an active antigen or do you have immune dysregulation. Active antigen means your body's trying to fight something that it can't kill. It could be food meaning you could be eating all this gluten and you have this genetic sensitivity to it and you don't even know that you're constantly giving your body this this antigen and your, your immune system keeps trying to kill it, keeps trying to attack it and guess what happens? It creates an autoimmune system uh, of reaction in your body. That's an active antigen. Active antigens can also be parasites, bacteria, viruses, molds, yeast, fungi, protozoans, foods, chemicals, heavy metals like mercury and things like that. Immune dysregulation means that your Autoimmunity is due to the fact that you have uh, poor cortisol issues, adrenal stress, you have poor health and that you have anemia, you have blood sugar that's up and down. Okay, so that's the two causes of autoimmune. The best indicator for an autoimmune is, or an active antigen is a CD4, CD8 ratio, which is called the helper suppressor ratio. We have to run that test. If it's above 2.5, that means your body is trying to kill something or you have this big big food sensitivity that's causing your insomnia, active antigen. Or if it's below 2.0, that means that you've got some adrenal issues. Now you could have, you could have both. You could have an immune dysregulation and an active antigen affecting your brain. It creates brain inflammation, which means you don't sleep very well. We'll run a DNA stool ecology profile, which is going to determine uh, gut composition by DNA testing. It's going to let us know do you have dysbiosis, which means you've taken a lot of antibiotics and now you've got bacteria, too much of the bad bacteria, too little of the good bacteria. We're going to test you for pathogenic bacteria, parasitic load. Do you have a parasite? If you have a parasite, we need to get that killed. And we have specific nutritional nutraceuticals that will kill the parasite and allow you to function better. We have to see if you have uh, candida or yeast. These are all things that can affect your insomnia. We can test for H. pylori, which is an upper GI bacteria. We can test you for inflammation. We need to test you for that. We can see if you have high C-reactive protein, high homocysteine, which means you have inflammation, which usually means you have autoimmune going on. Okay. We can test you for neurotransmitters. Patients that have, and if you're if you're already called to become a patient in our office, you have a little a form. Uh, it's the NTAF form, and what that's going to do is just help us understand what type of support you need neurotransmitter-wise. Do you need support with dopamine? Do you need support with serotonin? A lot of patients with insomnia have poor serotonin levels. Uh, do you need GABA support? Okay, and so we can tell wh what you need to do there. Hormone panels. Okay, do we need to test your hormone panels? Well, I'll tell you already that if you have an autoimmune problem, it trumps all of these things, um, but hormone panels we can run. Uh, glutathione and uh, what, what we do basically when you have when we get this whole picture metabolically we're going to find out what are your sensitivities we're going to find out what nutrition you need there's specific products specific nutraceuticals that are going to help balance your blood sugars they're going to help calm down and, and, and calm your adrenals it's called adrenal calm uh, we're going to put you on things that are going to help calm down any autoimmune responses we're going to get you off the foods that may be inflaming your brain okay and we also put you on something called glutathione. Glutathione is the mother load of all antioxidants in your body. It's absolutely essential for your brain's health and to reduce inflammation, reduce autoimmunity. Okay, so that's how we treat patients with these. Now, here's the deal. Have you had all these tests performed? When you went to your doctor and you said, Doc, I can't sleep, and it's been really, it's really affected my life, did your doctor say, well, let's run these tests. Let's run your uh, adrenal stress index, your autoimmune panels, your TH1, your TH2. Let's, let's find out if you have leaky gut. Let's find out what's actually causing the problem. Or what do you do? He said, take Ambien. How'd that work for you? Here, take Lunesta, and that's basically it. See, we're looking for the cause of the problem. Okay? And see, it's not that the medical doctors are, are bad in that regard. It's just that they've been trained to give drugs. Okay, drugs have side effects. We're trained in functional medicine. And, and metabolic and neurological care. Let's talk about the other side, the neurological treatments based on specific neurological testing. Here is the deal. When we look at the brain, when you look at the brain, you have different aspects of your brain. You have, this is called your cortex. We'll call that brain. You know, we can just say basically that's your brain. Down here you have cerebellum, and this is your brain stem. Patients that have insomnia have an overfiring upper brain stem. It's called a mesencephalon. So you've got a lower brain stem and you have an upper brain stem. The lower brain stem kind of facilitates relaxation, it facilitates digestion, it's called parasympathetic. The upper brain stem facilitates fight or flight, it, it, it facilitates stress. It facilitates what's called the sympathetic nervous system. And so what happens is normally the cerebellum, which controls balance and coordinated movement, fires to your cortex, 
which is this area here, and then the cortex fires to the lower brainstem. When the lower brainstem is firing really good, it will inhibit or keep in check the upper brainstem. And if the upper brainstem stays in check, then you function well. Okay, it's kind of like an unruly teenager. The upper brainstem is called the mesencephalon. When it goes, when it goes too fast because the brain is not firing, or you've lost that loop from cerebellum to brain down the lower brainstem, or the lower brainstem is not firing well enough, you get a high firing upper brainstem. And there's an area in the in the upper brainstem called the mesencephalic reticular activating system. And what that system does is it wakes up your brain. You don't want that thing. You don't want that thing running high because if it runs high at night, you're not going to you're not going to fall asleep. In fact, you're going to be the person that may fall asleep at first, and then bam, you're up the rest of the night. Combine that with bad adrenals, and boom, you have a problem. And so we need to find out which parts of your brain are causing that. Is it the lower brain stem? Is it the is it the frontal lobes? And we can do specific neurological testing. So, a, a symptoms resulting from Disruption in the brain's electrical activity, brain imbalances, and an overactive upper brain stem. The big thing is insomnia, but it eventually can lead to chronic pain, migraine headaches, blurred vision, increased sweating. Some patients with insomnia wake up in the middle of the night and they're like drenched in sweat. And the reason why they're drenched in sweat is because that upper brain stem is a sympathetic nervous system. It affects sweat glands. Um, so these are some of the issues. We've got to check and see if you have an overfiring upper brain stem. We can do that. Now, how does all this occur? Well, Either poor metabolic health, the autoimmune issues, the um, high blood sugars, the adrenals that are all stressed out, that's metabolic stress. Emotional stress, people that have post-traumatic stress, what will happen is it fires up their mesencephalon. And so people that have had a lot of stress in their life are going to get areas of their brain that need to be sort of calmed down. What will happen is they'll be too fast. So the upper brainstem fires too fast. And so past stress, emotional stress can cause this to your brain. And then physical stress car accidents, falls, slips, back pain, neck pain, that will affect the way your brain functions as a whole. So what we do is we need to do a comprehensive neurological exam along with the metabolic side. We need to look at blood pressure, we need to look at your tissue oxygenation, we need to look at heart rate and rhythm, salivary pH, reflexes, eye tests, cranial nerve testing, cerebellar tests. We have to find out which part of your brain is not firing good. Now, I'm not talking about disease process like MS and stroke and things like that. I'm talking about parts of your brain that are kind of like weak, like a weak muscle. We can find that out. Okay. Once we find that out, we put our patients on different types of therapy. Fuel and activation. So fuel is oxygen. Your body needs oxygen. Every year that you live uh, past age 25, you, your body reduces its ability to use oxygen by 1%. And so as you age, you use less and you, your, your ability to use oxygen is less and less. So we put patients on oxygen therapy. It's fuel for your brain and nervous system. And we also have you exercise when you're on oxygen therapy. We have you exercise. We have you do eye exercise. We have you put on an ergometer, an elliptical. And what that's going to do is it's going to help you with insomnia. Exercise with oxygen therapy is essential for patients. It slows down the upper brain stem, and it helps them sleep better. We do brain-based therapies. We can do interactive metronome, which is a computer-based program. Uh, we do eye light therapy. We can do OPK eye exercises, rebuilder, health lights. We have to find out which part of your brain is not functioning well. Okay. A lot of patients with insomnia have back pain also. The reason why they can't sleep is because their, their brain's firing too fast in certain areas, but they also have back pain. So we can do something called the active therapeutic movement, uh, which is a great machine for helping people that have pain and lying and bending in certain positions. We can do non-surgical decompression. A lot of people with uh, insomnia will have disc problems in their back. So that's essential also. Spinal health is key. We do biomechanical spinal correction. A lot of patients that, that sleep, they got stiff neck and things like that, and so we do chiropractic care. But the chiropractic care is specific to the brain problem. So if let's say your right brain's not firing good, we're going to adjust you on the left side. And a lot of patients with insomnia have some problems uh, you know, handling some of the forceful adjustments, so we may just use an instrument on one side of the body. Some patients can use an osseous adjustment. Okay, so we may do that also. We may use laser therapy for trigger points and different things like that. So all these chronic conditions, fibromyalgia, vertigo, all you know, neuropathy, insomnia, they all have some common threads. Oxygen issues, neurological misfiring, metabolic imbalances, which is blood sugar, cortisol hormones, anemia, autoimmune attacks. And so what we do is we connect... We look at all the pieces of the puzzle, the cortisol, the blood sugar, the hormones, the oxygen, the cortex, the cerebellum. We look at all this, and we put them all together 
to help you with your insomnia. So let me uh, ask you a few questions. How has your insomnia affected your relationships, your family finances? How has it affected other activities? Are you enjoying life to the fullest? Do you feel like when you wake up in the morning, if you even slept at all, do you feel like you have zip for the day, zest for the day? Insomnia really affects your life, and it's going to affect and create other chronic problems down the road. What does your insomnia cost you in time, money, and happiness, and sleep? Okay? Well, obviously it's cost you a lot in sleep, but it's obviously not made you happy. It's probably cost me a lot of money on all these different medications and drugs you're taking. Where do you picture yourself in the next three to five years if the true cause of your insomnia problem is not corrected? In three to five years, if we don't correct the cause of your insomnia, you may have other health conditions. Your body needs sleep. Okay? Excuse me here. And that's, that's basically it. So, so here's the story. If you are a patient, uh, not a patient, if you are a person that's suffering from insomnia and you're looking to uh, find the true cause of the problem and you want more information and you're on the web right now, what you can do is just page down on this web page and you can put your name and information in. And uh, what you can do from there is uh, put that information in, press submit, and what we'll do is we'll send you a full written report on how we help patients with um, with insomnia. If you're already a patient with insomnia, watch this video. Have your spouse watch this video. When you come back in, we're going to go over all of our neurological tests and let you know why uh, you're dealing with the problem. So thanks a lot. Take care.